What is, you know, this was a, an experimental design. There's no question about it. it it's a carbon composite. Um, you can tell us more about what that actually means. I mean, it's the kind of stuff used in spacecraft, but is it designed for deep underwater pressure? And what is the, what is the danger of that kind of material in this kind of environment? It's completely inappropriate for a, for a, a vessel that sees external pressure. Um, you know, uh, carbon fiber composites are used very, very successfully for internal pressure, pressure vessels, like let's say a scuba tank. And you can get two or three times multiple of what you could get out of steel or aluminum for, uh, for that type of pressure bottle. But for something that's seeing external pressure, all of the advantages of composite materials go away and all the disadvantages come into play. So if you're using a uniform material like steel or uh, titanium or ceramic or acrylic, um, you can do computer modeling with a high degree of, of accuracy and confidence. The second you start doing carbon composite or, or any kind of composite materials, you're introducing two materials that are in, in contact with each other, the filament itself and then the epoxy matrix that it, that it sits within. And at that point, you have degradation failure. So it, we always understood that this was the wrong material for submersible hulls because with each pressure cycle, you can have progressive damage. So it's, it's quite insidious because you may have a number of successful dives, which is what happened here, and then have it fail later. Well, we also want to point out OceanGate's former director of marine operations. He wrote this engineering report in 2018, I think it was. He focused his criticisms on the company's decision to rely on acoustic monitoring the sounds the hull made under pressure as opposed to a, a scan of the hull. According to him, uh, the company claimed no equipment existed that could perform that kind of a scan on the five-inch thick, car five thick carbon yeah. fiber hull. Yeah. I know it's yeah. difficult to say, obviously, without reading the report, but I'm wondering what you make of that because the, the, they, it seems like this company was making a big deal about the sensors they had that could you know, sense a problem with the hull, and if they could sense there was a problem, then they would have time to... To, to turn around and go back up. Clearly, they didn't. It's a bit like saying we have, we have a bit of a poor design for the engine in our jet or our rocket ship, but we have a sensor that will tell us if it's on fire. The, to me, that's cold comfort. And I think that if you're, if you're building a hull where you need to have sensors to tell you that it's failing, in the process of failing, you have no business designing subs or being in that, in that sub. Um, they touted it, I believe, you know, as a, as a good thing, as a, as a safety protocol. But I consider it a bad thing because it sheds a light directly on the, on the fundamental flaw of their, of their design.